for both the whole. Making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, we're trying to, we're trying to provide housing for black Americans. The impact of, on the, the choice, the idea that they're going to, I'm not, I've been proposing that everybody, they pay, the millionaires pay 1%, 1%. So no one after, uh, I've not raised the cost of Social Security for anybody. I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. And, and wants to get away with, get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, for the ability to, for the, us to be able to negotiate drug prices with the big pharma companies. You know, I, when I'm going to do a six tax system, for example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed, and it stopped. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban, um, the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the fact that Team Trump is already taking advantage of Biden's epic disaster that happened at the CNN debate last night, okay? Where Joe Biden, in front of millions, tens of millions of people, a worldwide global audience, could not complete a sentence, okay? Could not finish his thoughts on stage in front of everybody for the world to see, okay? They couldn't gaslight us and tell us that, oh, this is a cheap fake, that this is made up, it's some right-wing conspiracy. No, 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 no. They could not deny reality, okay? This is the first time that the mainstream <laughs> media has decided that we're not going to deny reality and we're going to acknowledge the truth for what it is, which is that Joe Biden is not in any shape at all, mentally or physically, really, to be president of the United States. That's just the honest to God truth, okay? And this is something that hopefully even the average everyday American can see because historically speaking, uh, debate performances like this, in which Biden did so bad and Trump did pretty good in my opinion, okay? I think he could have did better. But I think he did uh, as good as he needed to in order to showcase the fact that Biden is deteriorating mentally. But regardless, history has shown that uh, these types of debate performances uh, do not go well for uh, those who lose the debate. And CNN actually highlighted this. And I find that these facts that they have um, gathered here to be extremely fascinating and a terrible, terrible Terrible sign for Joe Biden moving forward. Oh, the title of this, I have this title page every single time. This time it's Trump's first debate victory. And that has two meanings. The first is that, you know, last night was the first debate of this cycle. But the second is it's actually his first general debate victory in the minds of the voters ever, ever. ever. 2016, Hillary Clinton won all the debates. Last time around, Joe Biden won all the debates. Here's the first debate winner margins dating back to 2012. Look here. Mitt Romney won by 42 points. Hillary Clinton just won by 13. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden last time around won by 32. Look at this. This year is the exact inverse of where we were four years ago. Donald Trump won this debate by 34 points by a 67 to 33 percent margin. So the fact of the matter is Donald Trump's performance last night was the best performance he ever put forth in the American voters' minds on a debate stage, or it could be argued that Joe Biden's debate performance was so bad that he managed to make Donald Trump actually look good. With that 34-point lead, does this mean, can we just go ahead and assume that this is gonna give him a bump when it comes to what voters will do? History isn't always precedent, but in this particular case, poll bump after winning the first debate, look at this. Joe Biden last time around got a poll bump. Hillary Clinton got a poll bump in 2016. Mitt Romney, after winning the first debate, got a poll bump in 2012. And in 2008, Barack Obama got a poll bump. And if you look on average, across those four different first debates, guess what? The person who won the debate gained four points on average. And of course, at this particular point, what we were dealing with going into this particular debate, if you looked at that CNN poll polls yesterday, Donald Trump was already ahead by two points. So if you apply that, you could end up if history holds, on average, you could be looking at a mid-single-digit lead for Donald Trump. And you know what? 
Again, we're talking about unprecedented debate performances for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, outside of the convention after the RNC in 2016, has never held such a large lead as this could potentially end up being if history holds. Of course, history isn't always precedent. We don't know what exactly will happen. But if you're looking back at history at this point, this history is very bad for the man who won the first debate four years ago. If history as a, is a guide, Correct. as we all say. Um, have a, an incumbent in the past face something like what is happening with Joe Biden now. What has that meant for them? Nothing good. Nothing good, Sarah Seidner. Nothing good for them. All right, incumbents who trailed prior to and then lost the first debate. Jimmy Carter, George H.W. Bush, Donald Trump, Joe Biden. Well, we don't know what's going to happen this year, but we know what happened with these three other guys. And you know what happened with them? They were one and done. They all lost re-election. And at this particular case, Joe Biden, you're looking at those polls right now, looking at those post-debate polls, looking at that Democratic panic. There's really no good news except for the fact that fortunately for Joe Biden, the election isn't today or tomorrow. It's in November because he's going to need that time to make up for what was historically bad performance for the current president of the United States. We should also mention there is also another debate. There is a lot of debate amongst those watching as to whether that is actually going to happen. So we will wait and see. We were, we're going to have to wait and see. But last night, there was nothing good for this man. All right. Wow. So, yeah, that was some fascinating analysis there from CNN. Um, the fact that you have the winner of the debate getting a four-point increase in the polls post-debate uh, is huge considering how Trump is already beating Biden by, what, one or two, three points? Okay, I believe he's actually beating Biden by more than that because Trump tends to underperform in the polls, okay? So now, so now that you have Trump beating Biden by such a wide margin, okay, apparently according to CNN, this is what the public believes that Trump won the debate, um, this is going to boost his poll numbers by probably, again, three to four points, okay? If Trump is up six, seven, eight points over Biden going into the election, is over. It's a landslide victory, okay? And when you look at some of these focus groups, right, of these so-called swing voters, these undecided people, which, I mean, at this point, if you're still undecided, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I really don't, okay? I think you have analysis paralysis, okay? That's what I think you have if you're undecided at this point, because I'm not sure after last night what is there to decide on. Do you want an empty suit running the country? Are you that Trump deranged? I mean, let's be honest. There are some people that are that Trump deranged that even after last night, they feel like, well, eh, you know, but Trump. I would have to say after watching the debate and watching how Biden handled himself and answering the questions, it reassured me of my, his unassurance be able to lead our country. I'm concerned he was hesitant, very not cognitive. Seemed like his data, he was missing his numbers. So very concerning. That's somebody I don't think that needs to lead our country. Does anyone share that same opinion? Couple of you do, who does not? Let me ask you. One of the big things that a lot of people forget, um, when we are typically speaking in day-to-day -day life, we tend to stutter as well. So sometimes it will take time to be able to think about what you're going to say. But regardless, when it comes to a strong leader and what we're looking for in a leader, I'm looking for somebody that I trust to be able to uphold policies that will protect me and are more concerned for the general well-being of everybody in the United States, which I got more from Biden, considering he did a lot more talking about policies, what he's done and what he plans to do. Whereas on the other side from Trump, all I really heard was I've done this and it was the best ever, but I never heard what it was. Or I heard that Biden was the worst ever, but I never heard why. So there was a lot that was left unclear for me. So while he may have appeared like a stronger candidate, on paper, there was a lot missing in terms of actual debate. You're nodding along, Victor. Why do you say so? I would agree with that. And the rules of the debate were you could not bring notes or any written material, so I'd defy anybody to try to speak for 90 minutes and not forget some facts. And the fact that, you know, he struggled with that. He's always had a stuttering problem. But like she said, I think the leadership qualities are there. Wow, wow. The delusion is strong for some people, okay? As you guys can see, we still have some delusional, undecided, but actually really secretly Democrat voters out there that are saying things like, for example, when Trump says that the border is the worst that has ever been, well, 
Trump just says that he doesn't back it up. Well, it's self-evident. There's been more illegal immigrants that have come into the country than ever, which is something that Trump has pointed out because of Biden's policies, which is something that uh, Biden, uh, again, refuses to acknowledge and Trump pointed out. Um, yeah, it's self-evident what he's saying, okay? Yeah, it is an actual fact that the border is the worst that it's ever been in this country, okay? We've never had as many illegals come into this country as the amount of illegals and criminals that are coming into the country right now under Joe Biden, right? We've never had this before, okay? So I'm not sure exactly how you see leadership qualities in a man that can't speak, can't talk, can't articulate uh, his thoughts without... Uh, essentially having many Mitch McConnell moments, okay, where he loses his train of thought because his brain stopped functioning. Again, we saw this happen. But anyways, the good news uh, is that other focus groups uh, saw that, hey, you know what? Uh, this guy Biden is mentally out of shape. He cannot be president of the United States. And he does not instill confidence in me that he can actually lead this country. And that is what Frank Luntz observed and he's going to break this down on CNBC. Now, again, Frank Luntz was a never Trumper who seems to be getting a dose of reality that Trump is inevitable, right? Trump 2024 is unstoppable, okay? Especially considering the way things are going right now. All right, welcome back, everybody. Now to the big takeaways from last night's debate. Joining us for that is Frank Luntz. He is, he is FIL pollster and political strategist. Frank, what did you think? In my entire professional career, I've done... 32 debates, never has someone performed, and I was very upset with Donald Trump in 2020. I have never seen a performance like I saw last night. My focus group all came in undecided, all from swing states. 12 of the 14 swung to Donald Trump, only one to Joe Biden. We've never had that wow. before. Wow. We are truly in uncharted territory. And what blew me away the most was that Joe Biden voters in 2020 don't want him on the ticket in 2024. What uh, the, the reaction? You had 14 swing voters from these states. All undecided, all voting Republican and Democrat back and forth over the last 10 years. And boy, did they swing. So let's see. You, you hosted that focus group. Why don't we hear what they had to say? Let's listen in. He does not have the leadership qualities to survive for the next four years. I don't even know how he's going to survive the next few months. They need a candidate that could beat Trump. Wow. Well, back then, he was an unknown to me, really, at the time. And I had seen what Trump had done. And now that I've seen him in action or in action, um, I, I just think if the Democrats want to have a chance at putting someone in the White House, they need to put someone else up. Well, they, they can't. They're not going to be able to. I'm telling you guys, it's too late. OK, it's too late. I think in 2020, Biden was a safe option that was relatively non harmful, harmful to replace Trump. And frankly, I did not I didn't think reflected these same cognitive issues that we see tonight on the campaign. Yeah, it was a little dry, but it was definitely not to the same extent, I think. Tonight, like, I'm not sure how he functions, like, during an eight-hour workday, let alone an eight-hour workday or eight-plus-hour workday as president of the United States. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't function. He doesn't do the job. Obama's pulling the strings behind closed doors. Uh, that's what's happening. That or Jill Biden, right? Somebody's running it. it. It's just not him, okay? Everybody knows it's not Joe Biden at this point. There's no way. So, Frank, you repeatedly heard from people there about the idea of replacing Biden on the ticket. How realistic is that? It's very difficult because of the Democratic laws, unless Joe Biden comes forward over the next few days and says, I've listened to the American people. I saw their comments. I accept it. And I'm going to I did what I promised I was going to do. I could write the speech. I did exactly what I promised I was going to do. I was going to bring normalcy back to Washington. I was going to find ways where Republicans and Democrats could work together. And now it's time for somebody else to take the reins. But he'd have to do it very quickly. He'd have to himself want to step aside. And there's no indication that he wishes to do that. And it was so devastating. Individual after individual said, I don't like Donald Trump, but Joe Biden scares me. And you can't fix scare. There's, there's no 
Wordsmithing. You can replace it. You can just switch those words for half the country. I, I, I don't like Joe Biden, but I'm afraid of Donald Trump. You can switch. That's, that's the election. Oh, and I, I don't, you know, he oh, can. There's, there's and, and what, but what you there. said that he can say that he did all those things. He didn't. He didn't unite this country. He didn't. He didn't do what he was. What, what he said he would do. A lot of those people. It's not only the cognitive decline. This is a different Joe Biden than, than what they voted for. But Frank. what they said, and I want to focus on the focus group because it's so unprecedented. What they said was that I never realized this. This is not editing of some video. This is not playing games. This is not AI. This is real. I saw it. I heard it. And I can't vote for it. So if he. Yeah, I mean, that's the hilarious part about it. Okay. Because again, the media has spent so much time telling people that what you're seeing is not real. Okay. Oh, it's just a cheap fake. Oh, well, it's just a right wing conspiracy theory. Don't don't believe it. Well, it's like, no, no, no. When the average person actually sees Joe Biden, okay, this is why they've been hiding him in the White House, okay, they've been hiding him at Camp David, right, they've been making sure that Joe Biden is not really seen in public, he doesn't talk too much, well, why is that? It's because they all know behind closed doors, this guy is an absolute disaster, he's a train wreck, and the American people now saw it on CNN, live television, and there is no spinning it, you can't spin what we saw happen last night. Right, we're, we're really living in an incredible moment of politics, guys. Where again, the credibility of the mainstream liberal media is getting even worse and worse and worse because everybody's realizing that yeah, I was lied to. They lied to us. They told us that Biden was as sharp as ever. Don't worry, it's just a right wing conspiracy. Turns out that again, the conspiracy theorists were correct. Okay, like we've been correct for the past four or five years. Again, this is an amazing moment in politics, guys. It really is. This is history happening right in front of our face. Were to step aside himself, how does that? What does that process even look like? So the Democrats, they would he'd have to open up his, his delegates, and the way that it works now is that you'd have a vote of the convention, but that's ignoring the Democrats who live across the country. If I were the Democratic national chairman, I'd say, three days from now, we're going to have a nationwide primary candidates can run and give it back to the voters because i promise you if this is a backroom deal then you're going to have people so angry that their choice was taken away from them but again we are in uncharted territory going back to the focus group last night they saw it in the first 30 seconds they saw it when he walked out they saw in his responses if donald trump had said less and allowed joe biden to say even more uh, it's indescribable what we watched in that session. Yeah, like I said, going into this, uh, the more that Biden talks, right, the worse it's going to be. And lo and behold, look what happened. Okay, this stuff is not hard. But uh, I, I think the Democrats are really stuck between a rock and a hard place in the sense that I don't think they're going to be able to replace Joe Biden. Okay, and I think if they try to replace Joe Biden, it's going to be a disaster. If they try to do it at a convention with some type of behind closed door uh, vote from party elitists, then again, the base is going to revolt. Whoever they put forward, uh, if it's not Kamala, I don't think they're going to be popular enough. Okay, and I think it's too late to have a primary, right? It's too late to now all of a sudden want to have a real primary when you should have had a real primary a few months ago. Again, all of this is happening because of Democrats and their refusal to acknowledge reality. OK, the gaslighting has finally caught up with the Democrats and it is backfiring in their face. And it is something that I absolutely love to see. I love to see voters now coming out and saying that, yeah, I didn't realize it was this bad. Well, yeah, because you haven't been paying attention. And that's what it's about, guys. It's about the people who are uninformed, that aren't paying attention, that casually turn on their televisions and they see MSNBC lying to them or NBC or ABC or CNN lying to them. Now they're able to see, oh, wait. Yeah, they, they actually were lying to me, right? That those people on the right, those conservatives, those people aren't crazy. They aren't insane. They was warning us. They were telling us, yeah, Joe Biden ain't too good. So again, this is an amazing moment in politics. We're witnessing history and I am loving every second of the cope from the mainstream liberal media, from the fact that people are realizing that, yeah, it, it's, it's effectively over for Joe Biden, okay? This debate may be the nail in his coffin. I don't think that Democrats have a solution out of this. I think that they made their bed, then they have to lay in it. And again, this is 
an exciting time, right? It really is uh, going into this election. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.